Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Friday, January the 30th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, how Obamacare could affect your favorite restaurant. Then, the new proposal to limit military weapons for police and the security theater surrounding the Super Bowl. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Stop it, NFL. I mean, it's disgusting. Well, the Super Bowl is coming up in just a couple of days. And of course, the halftime show is not the only spectacle going on. We also have the security theater that's being put on by the hyper Orwellian police state, as Adon Salazar points out. The feds are going to unleash it yet again, Super Bowl 49. They say that they're going to be implementing stringent, hypervigilant, anti-terrorist security measures designed to keep everybody safe, doing things like prohibiting air horns, barbecue sauce, flasks of all shapes and sizes, while ignoring concerns brought to light by a security consultant who last year, or 2013, pointed out that an array of makeshift weapons could be constructed just using gift shop items found beyond the TSA's checkpoints. Yeah, they've got all kinds of organizations there. They've got U.S. Customs and Border Control looking to police intellectual property for the NFL. We've got the Secret Service there. They're also going to be looking at Twitter, YouTube, scoping that out. They may even be scoping out some of the hookers. That's what they usually do, this uh, <laughs> Secret Service, when they go places. They're going to be open sourcing social media monitoring for situational awareness. And, of course, FEMA is going to have role players. I think they're all playing a role. To take a look at last year's Super Bowl, Jakari Jackson points out why we should be interested. He recollects what he saw last year. This is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. It's Super Bowl time, and we talk about the Super Bowl not because of the Patriots or Deflategate or anything else. We talk about the police state surrounding the Super Bowl. If you have the money and you want to go, that's your business. I hope you have a good time. But I just really wish NFL fans or anybody who goes out to these big stadiums or arenas would just say, hey, we don't want to be groped, we don't want to be patted down, we don't want any of this stuff to enjoy our entertainment. And with that, we go to this article, Feds to Unleash Hyper Orwellian Police State at Super Bowl. Now, this is the Super Bowl that's happening this year in Arizona. Last year, myself and Josh Owens had the chance to go. And I'll show you some of the police state measures. Now, these aren't even at the stadium. This is just to go to the stadium, and you'll take a look here. This is the train station because they didn't allow you to drive a personal vehicle unless you had a permit that was in short supply. You had to ride a bus or take the train. You can see the TSA at the train station. That everybody says it's a conspiracy theory that they were going to move outside of the airports. Well, there you go. There's proof positive. And here's some also some other guys. These guys aren't TSA, but they definitely have uh, big guns there uh, waiting to see if anybody was going to cause a problem at the train station. And also, I'll show you something else. This is the security setup they had at Times Square. You know, see uh, extra security cameras out there in full effect. And once again, you know, if you want to go to these events, that's fine. Just tell these people you don't want to be groped. You don't want to have your bag searched. You don't want all this stuff just to go enjoy your entertainment. And it's not just there. We also saw last year, we saw snipers at the Super Bowl. This was reported by local news. So in closing, if you're willing to, if you have the money, I guess, to pay a... Uh, a $800 ticket for a nosebleed seat. These are the seats that we had last year. You can see we're very high up in the stadium. We're about seven rows from the tip top. But if you can afford the shakedown of one of these tickets, then you have to go and endure the uh, pat down by the TSA or TSA style group. So if anybody's watching the game, enjoy it. But just tell the NFL to tell whoever else that you want your freedoms back and you don't want to go through all these measures just to watch a football game. You can find more reports on InfoWars.com. And of course, Homeland Security is reviving the See Something, Say Something campaign. And Adon points out to a quote from one of Paul Watson's earlier articles where he said, 80% of all Gestapo investigations in Nazi Germany were because of informants. It wasn't because of a super efficient investigation team. No, these were people turning in fellow citizens gave them all the work that they could do. That's the kind of world we're starting to live in. Now, Mitt Romney has come out and said that he's not going to run in 2016. Don't let the door hit you in the back, Mitt, as you leave. I, for one, am very happy to see him not mixed up in this after all the shenanigans that they played in the primaries 
all the crooked deals that were being done, as anybody who follows that and watch what happened with uh, Ron Paul knows. But of course, there are plenty of people just like Mitt Romney waiting in the wings to take his place. And of course, we're supposed to believe that it would have been a lot different had Mitt Romney been elected president. Maybe we wouldn't have had uh, Obamacare. No, we would have had Romney Care, which was exactly the same thing as Obamacare, even sold using the same lies and the same liar, Gruber, who bragged about it. Now we see some of the details coming out about Obamacare and the regulatory overreach that this allows different regulatory agencies to get involved with. This is, of course, coming from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. FreedomWorks points out that restaurants are now struggling to comply with calorie labeling requirements under Obamacare. Yeah, see, if the government is going to pay for your health care, they view you as being totally dependent on them, and they get to tell you what to do to live a healthy lifestyle. They'll define what a healthy lifestyle is, and they will enforce it upon you, not just on restaurants, but on you individually. That's coming. We've already seen that in the schools. But, of course, in this particular instance, we have a rule that is going to require retail food establishments with 20 or more locations to list calorie information on their standard menu offerings. And they point out that this, of course, is food retail operations. It'd be, of course, restaurants and delicatessens, but it would also extend to supermarkets, to movie theaters. And, of course, 20 is just some arbitrary number that they pulled out of the hat. They can take that down to a single restaurant, put mom-and-pop stores out of business, it's also a cost that's going to be borne by you as a consumer. It's going to be borne by higher costs. They're going to have to pass that along. Or if they can't pass the cost along because of competition, they'll go out of business. Or if you're working for them, maybe you might get laid off. Maybe you won't get that raise that you're looking for. All of these regulations have a cost. They have an economic cost. They have a human cost. But the fundamental issue isn't even one of whether this is going to work or whether we should do it, try to get people uh, more aware of what they're eating. The fundamental issue is they don't have the authority to make these kind of dictations. They shouldn't have that kind of authority. They shouldn't even have the authority to mandate personal insurance care. And that, of course, was the basis of the first Supreme Court decision that uh, Justice Roberts wrote the, the position on, saying that that kind of a mandate was unconstitutional. Then evidently, as some pressure was applied against him, he changed his mind and wrote the other side, said, no, we'll call it a tax and say that we can do anything we want. Now, there's some hopeful news out of New Hampshire where they have sponsored a state bill that would ban the police receiving military-grade weapons. This is a New Hampshire House Bill 407. It would bar officials from possessing any military equipment they say that's not readily available in open national commercial markets. This is uh, according to the 10th Amendment Center. They also point out in more detail, they say no state agency, this is the, the wording of the bill, no state agency or political subdivision of this state shall acquire, purchase, or otherwise accept for use any military-equipped vehicle or military-grade hardware, including but not limited to armored personnel carriers, Title II weapons, unmanned aerial vehicles, or unmanned, unmanned ground vehicles, unless... Those are available on open national commercial markets. And, of course, New Hampshire was one of the places where we saw a pushback against the use of uh, military surplus equipment, uh, MRAPs. They said, why do we need this in this area? And, of course, the police chief said, well, we have libertarians in this area, dangerous people who think that uh, they have something to say about running their lives. Stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about even more regulatory outreach the overreach, and the consequences of it. Stay with us. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory 
offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, there's a troubling story coming out of Canada, and I guess we should be concerned about it since we no longer have the United States. We now have the North American Union. So I guess what's going on in Canada is going to be uh, what's going to be going on in America. It's not as if we had a constitution either, because even though they swear allegiance to it, even though they use the constitution as their authority to do what they want, they feel free to ignore it here in this country as well. In Canada, however, they've got a situation where everyone in the neighborhood has now been asked for blood samples by the police to prove that they're not a murderer. Now, we had a heinous crime there with a pregnant woman, and as, as bad as that was, think about the consequences of everyone being considered to be guilty unless you prove your innocence. Here's what's going on. They say police in Windsor, Ontario, have ordered hundreds of DNA testing kits, and they're going door-to-door -door in residential neighborhood where... Former Prime Minister Paul Martin grew up asking everyone to provide a blood sample to rule themselves out as a suspect in the murder of a pregnant woman. The mass request for blood samples prompted more than 500 residents to agree, and they said a, quote, handful of people to say they had concerns about it. Now, some of the people who are concerned about it is the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. They say the extraction of a DNA sample without a warrant is concerning. It is inherently coercive. That's right. It is a brute force investigation, and it is coercion, and it is holding everybody as guilty until proven innocent. Now, of course, Canada doesn't have anything like our Bill of Rights to ignore, as we ignore it here in this country. Nevertheless, the idea that you are innocent until proven guilty is a long-standing tradition coming from England and also part of Canada's tradition. They say there's no guarantee also that doing a wide sweeping examination of DNA is really going to solve the crime. They know, however, that it will violate the rights and the freedoms of individuals. And here's how it plays out. In a previous case, they also did this because they didn't want to be bothered doing the detective work. They went around asking for blood samples. They had the murderer they eventually found was the murderer. He was a refuser initially. And what he said was, no, this puts the onus on me. I have to prove that I'm not guilty. It seems like big brother to me. So they quote in this article, someone who was later found to be a murderer who says, oh, this is big brother approach. Nevertheless, it wasn't just him, but it was two other individuals. And all three of them became prime suspects, persons of interest. So you had two other people who were just standing up for their individual rights saying, I should not be considered to be guilty unless I give you my blood to prove my innocence. Those people were turned into prime suspects. And that's the whole point of all this is that once you refuse, the state turns on you as a person of interest, just as we see happens if people object to NSA surveillance. Now, in this country, we see a couple of cases in just the last week where the FDA has gone full blown after people who are involved with a particular sub, uh, supplement. It's not really important what the supplement is. It's a supplement that people have been using, but the FDA has now turned all of their devices against this. We've got a FDA attacking a man who was selling a supplement that it, they say has healed tens of thousands of people. They're coming after him to put him in jail for 37 years in prison. 
okay, well, if it's a harmful substance, maybe he needs to go to jail for doing this. Except that's not the issue. They haven't proven that it's harmful. All that's proven is that they didn't approve it prior. See, everything in America is now prohibited unless it is expressly permitted by some unelected government bureaucracy like the FDA. And in the article, they point out that there's 106,000 cases in just the last year of FDA-approved drugs killing people. And they say, in this particular case of this substance, there are no proven cases of anyone dying. Yet this man, who has a jury trial coming up in 30 days, may go to jail for 37 years. This is where you need to apply your knowledge of jury nullification, educate people about their responsibility. We need to stand with each other when the government tries to do this type of thing and say, you're not going to do it. But it's a very troubling thing to me that the government can come in and accuse people of something without proving that it's harmful, merely making it a crime that they have not approved at first. And we saw this last week with a uh, homeschooling prepper family, as it was reported from the Washington Post and other places, Seven of his children were taken away from the couple, and apparently it was because of this same supplement. He has two other children who are now in college, yet they're saying that this is something that is dangerous. This person was not selling it. He was using it for himself, and according to the Washington Post, he's 73 years old. He's got nine children. He has been using this supplement from the same four-ounce bottle for more than a year. He's used less than four ounces in more than a year. But of course, they're going to take away his children. They're going to throw this man in jail, not because they've seen any harmful effects, but because they haven't given approval and because it's a competition to their corporate owners, their corporate sponsors, the people who use the FDA to give them plausible deniability and protection from lawsuits when their materials kill people. They say that this is something that turns into a potent bleach that can cause side effects that range from uncomfortable to life-threatening. And yet, we haven't seen this with this man. And he says he's not giving this to his children. That's the type of thing that we're seeing increasingly, just as we saw in the last segment, using Obamacare to come in and tell us what we can and cannot eat in the name of protecting us from ourselves, protecting us from obesity. We need to be informed as to what the risks are. That's what the FDA is not doing. And then at that point, we need to be able to make the cons have the, con uh, the informed consent. We need to determine whether or not we want to do this. It is our bodies. It is our lives. And we've seen prohibition enacted for far too long. And, of course, they don't have the authority to prohibit anything. The amendments to prohibit alcohol tell us that the government needed to amend the Constitution in order to prohibit any substance the ownership, the sale, the use of any substance. They didn't have the authority under the Constitution. They had to create a constitutional amendment. And so they don't have the legal authority, the constitutional authority, to do that with marijuana, certainly not with medical supplements. Well, stay with us right after the news. We've got a special report from Rob Dew, how you can stage your own beheading video, just like the CIA and ISIS. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methocobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. 
There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week, I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, last week we came out with a video called the ISIS beheading video fail. Got tons of views. But what we want to do is give you a more in-depth look at how you can create a video like this using the green screen, the chroma key, and some After Effects uh, tricks as well. Uh, we don't have the funding that uh, ISIS has. We don't have CIA backing. We don't have government backing. We go purely off of our listeners, our uh, followers in the info war. So what we're going to do is go to Rob Dew inside the green screen area, and then we're gonna to go to Darren McBreen to talk about how he can make everything look way more realistic. And then another thing as well, we wanna go ahead and say that we're not trying to make fun of what's going on over there in the Middle East. We know that ISIS is a real terrorist organization. They actually behead people, they're lining people up in the streets and shooting them dead. And we, our heart goes out to all those people who have been killed and the families that are still here. So all this is, is we're looking at it from a different aspect, saying that this is something that can be questioned, because after looking at the videos of the uh, the Johnny Jihad with the two Japanese hostages, there was some shady stuff. I mean, even Fox News is coming out and saying that. And then you have different people like the Daily Sheeple that are questioning it. And quite frankly, tons of people on Twitter think it's a, a pretty bogus video. And that's all we're looking at is that aspect, not the fact that real people are being killed. That's a horrible thing. We're just looking at the technical aspects. So let's go to Rob Dew inside the green screen studio and take a more in-depth look. Thanks, Joe. Now, right now, we are on the set, which you can't even really tell because we haven't turned on any lights. This is our green screen setup we have here at InfoWars.com, and I'm going to show you basically how they lit that terrorist ISIS video using the two Japanese prisoners. So first, we're going to turn on the first light. So over here, we're going to put on our guy, Richard, and you can see it's light here, dark here. Now we're going to put on the other light to get the same effect and you can see dark here, light here, but they also had light in front of them. So we're gonna put our third light on. This is basic three-point lighting. And now you can see, and we can adjust the intensity of the light, but you can see there's still shadows on the left and right. Now, I doubt they were using the same lights that we're using. We're using these intelligent um, uh, LED lights. They're LED panels. These are 50-watt panels, and that's a 100-watt panel there. But you can still see we got dark, light, and then dark, light, which would negate any evidence that they were shooting outside, which they would have you to believe from the video. And now let's cue the fan so we can get that going. And you can see how it's blowing the uniforms. So here we have our background. Uh, this is just on our, another source. This is a computer that runs into our TriCaster program. I imagine if these guys are CIA funded, they're probably using a better chroma key version than what we have because we're actually supported by our listeners not by our, the government or the CIA in this case so here you can see is brought up in source 6 this is our main screen of our guys I'm actually gonna pull them off and you're gonna see this is the uh, desert scene again and I actually I can do all kinds of stuff I can change the contrast of it okay I can bring that back in so you can do all kinds of stuff with that. Now we're going to bring in our guys, but I'm actually going to turn off our chroma key, and I'm going to show you how that's done. Right there, there, we bring it in. Boom. So there they are in a desert world. Um, and you can see we're going to bring this. Let's see. Let's bring that's there and that's there. So you can see how, look, there, there you can see what's cut out and then bringing it in. You can just bring in the background. So then they could change this background. Now, you guys turn to the side a little bit. Yeah, turn this way for the side shot. 
And so we've got two different shots and we'll shoot this and we'll record this on tape so you can see the difference between the two so we could show how you could actually make two different shots out of one or they could even have two cameras and I think they were using two cameras at the same time with their uh, pre-recorded message and you can't tell if the guy's talking or not so that could easily be pre-recorded they could have a fan going but most most assuredly these guys were not in a uh, out, outside environment they were doing it inside and the big thing is is you can't do this stuff without some technological know-how and some funding and now, yes, ISIS does have funding. They get it from selling oil, other terrorist activities, they're looting, but they're also, they got their seed money from the CIA. But it also takes know-how to do this. You're not gonna have the typical ISIS jihadi knowing how to come in here and set up a chroma key setting. I mean, we've got this system here, and it took us a few months to get this down pat. So they had to bring in experts, get people to work with them. Those experts, probably from the CIA or some other entity that's working with these guys. So now we're going to show you how you can even uh, chroma key this stuff and add drop shadows using uh, After Effects. All right, so here we are in the post-production phase. We are with Darren McBreen, InfoWars graphics expert. You see all of his videos, a lot of the, he does the stingers, he does all the cool graphics that we have here at InfoWars.com. Now tell us what it is we're working on now for the video. Well, we got you guys just got through in front of the green screen. If you can get a closer look at this. I want to put some backgrounds. This is the background. This is the sand dunes background. And then I got some clouds. And what I do with the clouds, uh, I'm actually, these clouds are going to move from left to right. Oh, so you could actually add that in there. It just so it looks a little more believable, right? All right, so I pulled this footage into Adobe After Effects. I'm going to put a key light on here. And there you go. There you There's go. our background. You see a lot of what they call chatter around the neck. We're going to get rid of that but with a simple choker. And again, this is just really quickly done. The more time you spend on these things, the, the better it looks. And this is just to illustrate that the footage that you've seen of these beheadings, we're not saying that we're faked, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. Definitely possible using green screen I mean, and, and, and thus far in the production phase, we're only 20 minutes into this and we've already gotten this far. Yep. So imagine with CIA backing and tons of funds coming in, you know, they're going to be able to get this looking really good. Absolutely. And, you know, here's another thing I did is I decided these guys, let's, let's beat them up a little bit at their eyes. Gave them a little black eye there, black eye there. So it looks like they've been roughed up a little bit. Again, to get it more realistic, there's more work to be done, but you can see just in a couple minutes, we've even added some dust elements in the background, some clouds back here. And I think it's looking pretty good. Yeah, and it's all about lighting, you know, with the proper lighting, we could, we could really, you know, make this even look more realistic. But uh, I, you know, like we were saying, we don't know if if that was a green screen or not. If these beheadings were faked, but you could tell by just well, a everyone's minutes questioning it. So I mean, all we can do here is kind of analyze. All right, if they are faking it, yeah, this is how they would do it. Yeah. I agree, and I question some of the shadows that, that we saw on the Japanese beheading videos just didn't look right to me, and once again, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not sure whether it was faked or not, but it certainly looks possible. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you're watching on Google, please subscribe to our channel there. And if you would like to support our operation and see the nightly news as it happens Monday through Friday at 7 Central, Please become a subscriber to Prison Planet TV. Right now we have our year end and year beginning special of $29.95. That can be shared with up to 20 other people at the same time. And of course, they will all have access to Alex Jones's documentaries right there at Prison Planet TV. Join us again on Monday at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. 
Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.